So we're at a stage now where I'm pretty confident that you could take what you've learned so far and just run with it. You can play around more with the feathers, the fur, the mane, the tail, um, adjusting those attributes just to get the look that you want and experiment more with the expressions, even just adding in a random value just on the hair and the tail length, for example. That will vary the length and just make it look a lot more interesting. So what we're going to do in this final video is basically just uh, tidy up a few loose ends and just have a look, having have a quick look at rendering out the uh, the hair and the fur and the wings and just uh, just to finish off really. So the first thing we need to do is, if we're done with the grooming, we're just going to hide that for now. So I'm going to open up the XGen window, go over to grooming, and just turn off visibility. There we go. That's quite easy to do. Um, let's go back to our channel box. So let's let's just jump in and do a quick render. I just want to make sure the background on the camera isn't black. That's right, because I just put a new camera into the scene. Um, so let's just render this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video just while it renders. So here we go. I mean, it only took a minute to render, but it's a mini that you've got to wait around while I waffle on. Um, so I'll probably just pause it with each render. But as you can see, we've got the same problem that we did with the mane and with the tail, and that's that the fur is white, and that's because it's using its own default shader. So just like we did with the other hair, we can go to the hypershade and just put on our basic shader. Now obviously if you want the fur to be a different colour then keep this shader separate and adjust that appropriately but for now we, I'm quite happy just to have the hair for the mane, the tail and the fur all exactly the same shader. So let's select objects with that material and assign and then we'll just delete unused objects and those have gone which tells us that that's now uh, applied to the fur. One other thing that we're noticing, I know it's a low resolution render, but it's looking a little bit patchy in areas. Now that could be because of the grooming, or it could be because the density is quite low. Now I'm not going to ramp up the density just yet because it's if we increase the density, then it's going to increase the render time. Um, but that's something to keep in mind later on. Just before you do your final render, increase that density and just get that... Uh, get rid of those patchy areas. So let's just uh, do another, I'll just pause the video, do another render while uh, we just see what the latest update is. So that's looking a lot better with our shader back on. The fur is black. And again, we just need to increase the density a bit because it's looking a bit, uh, a bit sparse, but that's not a problem. Uh, we're getting a bit of specularity on the chest there, but that's all fine. So at the moment, we're just using the default light, which has just been projected from the camera onto the horse. So let's just throw a couple of quick lights into the scene to just see how the uh, the fur holds up. So I'm just going to use a couple of, use all lights, a couple of directional lights. If I was setting this up properly, we'd we'll probably play around with spotlights or something like that. But for now, I'm just what I want is a nice strong light from behind, and that's just going to catch the the fur around the silhouette of the horse. I'm going to duplicate that, and we're just going to create another light, and this is just going to be the sort of like the key light, and this is just going to light the front of the horse. Just like so. So by putting those two in, we should get some nice light on the front and just from the back, we should get a nice sort of rim where the, the light's catching through the actual uh, fur. So let's just pause again and render and just see how that update looks. Okay, so we've got the light behind, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It's maybe catching a bit of specularity on the tail. I'll just save this image but that's not doing anything really. We expected to have a nice rim of white light just catching the fur which is sticking out here. Now the problem is we haven't updated the shader. If we go back to our shader,
like so. Close this down. I'm just going to pull off this uh, attribute editor here. So as you can see, we have all the attributes that we were playing with before. We've got our ambient color, diffuse color, the specularity color, but we've also got this back color and that's currently set to black. So let's just jump in and set that to red, just to see what happens. And one other thing to mention down here just quickly is you can attach lights to the fur, which will only affect the fur. Now that may be useful further down the line. Um, on some of your future projects but it's something to keep in mind if you want the fur to look differently because of the lighting in the scene you can have the fur using its own lights just by connecting them into the shader down here but let's go back to our render so now we've set the back color to red let's just frame that image so I've saved a copy I'm gonna pause the video and render this and fingers crossed it's all worked so there we go, and we can immediately see the difference. I'll just zoom in. So this is how it was before, and this is how it is now. And the light's now traveling through the back of the hair and the fur. And as you can see, by changing that back color, it's now allowing it to pick out this silhouette, which just makes the horse look a lot more interesting. Obviously, you might not want it to be red. Um, you could have it white or blue or whatever color uh, suits you. But that's just a, a nice way just to get that sort of effect on the fur. Having this uh, back color enabled as well also allows you to assess how the mane and the tail are holding up. I mean, obviously that now they've got that back color in, and we've got some lights in the scene affecting them. We can see that they may be a bit too thin um, we can thicken those up, adjust the specularity a little bit more, and this just allows us to then play around with the shaders. This particular shader here, a lot more, just to balance it out and get the exact look that we're after. I mean, a lot of the uh, settings in here are pretty self-explanatory, ambient, diffuse colour, and your specular colour, and your specular colour too. And obviously now the back colour, back gamma will control how much how much of the uh, back color affects the fur uh, in a certain sort of way. Um, but what I would suggest is just experiment with these values, play around with them and just see what sort of look you can get with the fur um, with this particular shader and with those lights in there. Um, one thing I will mention is I, I talked about just adding in your own lights down here, which only affect the fur. Now, the way these lights work with it, you will also uh, correspond with this mode here. And this tells uh, Maya, this tells the shader which lights it should be using. So it's set to four now, and that's set to use all lights in the scene. Set it to two, it'll be use all the lights in the scene except for the selected lights. Um, one will set the illumination using specific lights in inclusive mode. So selected site lights in the scene are linked to the shader. Um, but again, don't get bogged down in the technicalities of it. Just play around with them and just see what effects you get. It doesn't take long to adjust the setting and render and then go back and fix it. And I find that's the best way to learn is to just dive in and experiment rather than somebody telling you what each section does. Um, so I do encourage you to do that. Now, before I... Uh, finish this video I do want to just very briefly discuss when you come to do your final render I'm just going to close these down and open up the XGen window now clicking the render button here is fine because what this is doing is XGen will be rendering the scene using any preview files it generates here and if you notice in your Maya folder um, where you have your project set, there'll be an XGen folder. Um, actually, I'll just uh, I'll just bring it up and show you. So this is where my current project is set. As you can see, I've got a Maya folder, and that's where the main project is set for Maya. And in there, it's created an XGen folder. So in here, as you've been working, it's been updating this collections folder. And as you can see here, we have the collections that we've been building. We have our horse fur, horse hair, and in here we have all our groom 
information all saved out as PTEX files rather than uh, JPEGs or anything else like that. This just means that it can work independently of any UVs you have set on the on the models. So you don't need UVs set initially. Um, so yeah, when you render here, it's just using those which it, it outputs every time you click preview, which is fine. But when it comes to do a batch render, it doesn't use those. So what you need to do first is go to File, Export, uh, there we go, Export Patches for Batch Rendering. So that will export all the mesh information that has an XGen description attached to it. So that's fine. That will export to the folder and your batch render will then be told which parts of the mesh use which um, XGen description. What you also need to do is in your preview output, um, where is it? Here we go, in under render mode, you need to set that to batch render two on each XGen description. So hopefully with all that set up, when you click then batch render, should be work, should work and should be job done, fingers crossed. Um, I've had a few issues with batch rendering in the past, so um, if you have any problems with that, please do get in touch and ask me how I sort of got around it. Um, but, you know, it does tend to work, so that's absolutely fine there. Um, so I think that's it. I just wanted to mention that about the batch rendering, um, because you can't just do a straightforward render and then it's done. Um, so that's quite an important thing just to throw in at the last minute. So I think that's it. We've uh, we've come to the end of this course. Um, I hope you've learned a lot about XGen and I hope you're a lot more confident um, in how to use it and how to set up the various different aspects like fur, long hair, and we've even used primitives to uh, uh, create the horse's wings. Um, so from here... I'm just going to leave you with this file, play around with it as much as you like, uh, experiment, rip it apart and just see how things are done and come back to it and refer to it as well. Um, and please let me know how you get on with XGen in the future. You can always bug me via my Facebook page or by my website. So that's uh, this course done for now. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next course.